Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this fairy sat on the moon. The idea is to route out all the white sections, leaving that nice thin purple section in between as a separation barrier. Then once it's all nicely routed out, we'll cut it out on a scroll saw. You can see I've made an extra pencil line, just to allow that vein or barrier to continue round the full project. Then once it's cut out with the scroll saw, we'll give it a nice sanding down, clean it all up. Then all of these sections that we've routed out, we'll put in some nice coloured resin to complete the full project. Now the wood we're using today is pine. It's recycled pine. This has actually come off the bottom of a wardrobe. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. So it's quite thick. However, you can see from that, it's full of holes and bits and bobs and the back's maybe not so clever. So I've had to play about a bit to get this fairy in the right position so these nasty knots aren't all incorporated within. But remember, most of it's going to be covered in resin anyway. The only bits of wood we will see at the end are these little vein bits here. And I'm going to leave them just standing up slightly from the resin. I've done previous projects where I've filled it to the maximum, if not allowing it to overflow, then you sand it all down flush. So it's really smooth, and then you cover it all with resin. However, on this one, we're going to let those little barriers, as we're going to call them, separation pieces, stand up slightly, just so you can feel that it's still been routed out. Okay, as always, we've got our template done. I've played around with it a bit, just get out of the way of a couple of nasty knots in here. We stuck it down with our painter's tape. As always for me, I like to use carbon paper, graphite paper, literally slot that in. Take your time, enjoy the project and literally draw around it all. The only rough lines remember, once you've drawn around it, you can remove that template and we can use this one over and over again. This would be nice to be cut out on the scroll saw, so look out for a project further down the line. Same with your carbon paper, you can use that till it basically runs dry on you. So you can see from that, we've got our template on there. That's enough for what we want. The lines look a bit rough at this moment in time, but that's only a guideline. Once we get the router on it, and the sanding, and the clean up, we can make them as thin or as large as we like. And like I said, once that's all routed out nicely, leave the cutting out to the end. Don't rush yourself and go in and cut it all out. You've got less space for your router to run on. So you leave it as one solid piece. That gives you plenty of room for the router to work on it. Then once it's all routed out, then we can go and cut it out. I will be cutting it out with a spiral blade, a Pegasus number 5. We'll talk about that near the time. But for now, we're going to route out all the shaded areas. Remember, they were previously white on our printout. These dark to darker sections, just one, two and three, they will be cut out with the scroll saw, just to give it a bit of separation in between. As always for me, CNB, CNC bits, these are fantastic, they come in different degrees, 15s and 20s, they're 20s those ones. These are 10s and 15s, I'm going to use a 15 today, a nice new one. Just to get us going, just get it out. Nice and sharp, you can tell from that. And the idea is we're just going to route inside the lines here. Never on the line with any of these degrees, because obviously the thickness of the blade there, that will alter the, the depth, or should I say the size, of those individual pleats. So it's, if it's inlay, you want to route on the inside of the line. If we were moving the background, then we would route out just to the outside of the line. Never route on the line itself. Okay, so we've got our little 15 degree there. That's a Dremel size, 3.175 millimeter. If you need it to fit in a router, you're gonna need an adapter collet. That's simply just a little tube like that, 6.35 millimeter. Now the CNC bit just slots in there nice and easy. That's now a quarter of an inch and that will fit into your router, no problem. We'll do a couple of sample depths on here till we find out how deep we want to go. 
we don't want to go too deep on this because the deeper you go the more resin you're going to use and it's just a waste of resin personally so once we've gone around all our lines with that we'll pop on our end milling bits these are fantastic for clear out they come in different sizes we might get away with a medium sized one which will be that one there because remember we've got to fit into these smaller areas when you get to the big areas you can maybe go to a bigger size and they fit the same adapter collet so that's just a simple case of removing that pop that inside give it a nice push down to it reaches that barrier there we'll set it to the same depth remember that we're going to make over here somewhere and then we'll start removing all the shaded out areas take your time to shade in what you're going to remove it's it's worth that extra two or three minutes because you'll go away come back and you'll start routing in between the lines oh that's a project over with so shade in the areas that you want to remove okay that's enough talking for me let's pop this cnc bit our 15 degree one you could use a 2030 i just want a degree that's straight down if you know what i mean because obviously the redding redding is going to fill all the sides in so we don't need any degrees or any angles to the cut okay we'll pop it in the router and we'll start routing this one out Right, you can see from that we've gone around all our lines just about all that up for you like so I've took little sections out every so often just so I have a bit of the marker and that just lets you get you into the corners a bit better once we've got our end milling bits on now I have noticed on this if I can just find it again just along there it's actually a crack that runs or a split. I'll just try and do a little bit of separation on for you. you just see it there. So it's actually got airline fracture, we'll call it the full length. So we're going to go a little bit steady with that. Normally, if I hadn't started the project, we would just split this in two and use the two halves on something else. So we'll just be conscious of that. There is a line that runs the full length. But hopefully, once we get the resin inside, that sets solid and that will actually bond it all together again so we'll have to be a little bit cautious with that piece but like i say we've gone all the way around i always show you two or three of the line work it's exactly the same on every piece you don't want to half an hour of somebody drawing around some lines with a cnc bit i'm sure okay so we've took the cnc bit out we're going to remove that now and simply pop in one of our end milling bits these are fantastic because they route out the side section as well as the bottom so they will smooth it out to a certain extent okay so we'll find one that fits we don't want to go too big like say that one because obviously we're not going to fit into these tight areas on the earpiece and there's some smaller bits in here that might be a bit awkward you definitely want to got it in that one you can see how it's sticking already so we want a medium size one until we get to these bigger sections then we can swap it so we'll go for this one here that one there the white one and it's just a simple case of Removing your CNC bit like we have done, slot that in there, up to that barrier. I remember when I first got these, they didn't come with that barrier on. And I was trying to remove that for some reason, but it wouldn't move. So then I've realised it's to pop it on until it pops into place. We'll put it into our router. We'll set it to our depth up there. Or obviously one of these sections there. And then we'll start removing out all the inner sections there. Let's do that now.
Right, you can see from that, we've made it all the way around in one piece with our end milling bits on. Once I removed the smaller section, I just put on the biggest piece and cleared this big ones out, no problem whatsoever. This recycled pine, it just cuts like butter. It's really nice. It's a little bit dusty, but certainly no issues with it popping out. As you can see from that, everything's still in order. Now, I did have a couple of options. One was to actually leave it on the board as it is and then route out the background just to lower it slightly so she stood up just slightly, a couple of mil off the board, and then route out a border all the way around to make a ready-made frame. That was another option. But I'm going to cut this out with a scroll saw, like I said previously, just because I like to use a scroll saw. Now, the three types of blade you can use for anybody that's new to the scroll saw. There's a standard blade, very basic, what they call a pin blade. Basically, it has a pin at both ends. You just about to see from that. And that would hook onto your saw top and bottom. When you place a blade into the scroll saw, you want it to feel smooth on the way down and you want it to feel rough on the way up. That way you know your blade is in the right way and you want the teeth pointing towards you. They're okay, they'll come on your basic cheaper saws and they're okay throughout work if you're just starting and you want to build up something a bit more expensive. So that's your first blade. The second blade they use is what they call a pinless blade, self-explanatory. There's obviously no pins on the end of that one. These are really fine. These are ideal if you're doing a lot of intricate inside work. Fancy you're taking this middle section out, which we're going to do in a minute, to be honest. And it was really small, like something into the earpiece. You would drill a pilot hole. As you can see, I've drilled three holes in there already. And you would feed that blade through. Now, it wouldn't matter today because it's quite a big area. So you could drill a bigger hole and feed that pin blade through. Like I say, if it was really small or really detailed, you'll get that pinless blade in a lot easier and, less than, and not having to draw such a big hole. The blade I'm going to use today is what they call a spiral blade. These are pinless. I love these spiral blades. You will either love them or hate them. They're going the same way as your standard blade, so smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. But the blades are spiraled. So the blade goes all the way around the actual blade saw itself, should I say. So with these standard blades, you would have to have that in, let's say, like that. And you'd cut that down towards you. Then you'd have to turn the wood, cut down there, and turn, and turn, and turn, and turn the full piece round to actually start getting along there. Whereas with a spiral blade, it will cut in any direction. So we could start with that on the saw, like so. We could start there. And if you just run that along there, all the way around, without basically turning that wood. That way you've got that depth to play with. Where on a normal saw, you might just struggle to turn and twist it. There's other options to it. To it. Find the one that suits you. So I'm going to go for a spiral blade. Unfortunately, my little drapper saw. I have to use these adapter clamps. These are fine. They're just a little bit of a pain sometimes, setting them up if you're doing multi-cuts. So we'll pop that in the saw. And we'll start cutting this one out. And then those three middle sections you can see there. Just remove these blades. Those three middle sections there. And as you can see, we've already drilled a pilot hole. And we'll feed the blade into there. And just cut out that section. One, two and three. Okay, let's cut this one out now. Okay, we've made it round with the scroll saw. Now it's not perfect, and I've never once stated that I was a master scroller, but we'll give it a go. There's certain areas where I've gone off track slightly, 
I rather mess up to the outside of the line. You can always sand it down and shape it up. This, but there's certain areas, as long as you don't cut into it, that's the main problem. If you remember previously, I mentioned the airline fracture. I mean, you can really see that now. That's just gone there by itself. Now, I've not removed this yet. I just want to take it out now just to show you what we've got and the dust that's left behind. If you remember that fracture again, there it is there, look. Well, there you go. That's gone right across to the other side. So that's no good to us anymore, obviously. But there's plenty of decent pieces there, and we'll get some smaller projects out of that. Try not to throw anything away if you can help it. Right, and there's our basic shape. Now, it's very dusty. But them spiral blades, people moan about it not being a nice smooth cut. Unfortunately, I can't really show you on the mobile phone here, but I'm happy with that. That's nothing. And as I'm just going to turn it over, they're going about all the mess on the back with the bristly bits. You can rub that off with your fingers if you wanted to. Little bits like this, little rough areas, a little sandpaper, a couple of seconds. It's gone. That's all cleaned up. So don't let people put you off as regards to the spiral blade. I'm quite happy with them, but there's a lot of haters out there. Right, that's it. That's our basic shape. She's a little bit dusty at the moment, bless her. Obviously, we're going to tidy it up so we can uh, get it to look a little bit better and obviously what it is now. What I normally use is a Dremel or a rotary tool. It doesn't have to be a Dremel, obviously, and some cheap eBay engraving bits. They come in a container like this in a full row. I'll get one that's got a nice flat bottom on it. Something like this. So it's got the rough sides, but a nice smooth bottom. And that will let us just go in all the way around here. Just a general tidy up. We don't have to concentrate too much on the background. Remember, we're going to fill it all in with resin. Ideally, we just want to get rid of little, little niggly bits in these corners and whatever. Tidy it up. Then we want sandpaper. Basically, just to remove the pencil lines and just to round these off very slightly so it's not so square okay we'll tidy up now and then we're on to the next stage Okay, that's enough sanding down for me. We've got more or less what we're going for. If you remember, once the resin goes in, we're only going to see these top sections. Just enough to say you can tell it's been routed out. So we don't need to concentrate too much on the back area. Now the next stage for me is to put boiled linseed on. I'll you just brush it in over, give it a nice soaking down. A quick wipe over. And then we'll come back in a couple of days when it's nicely dry. And then we'll spray on some crystal clear I'm going to use. Back onto my old favourite. Now the reason why we put this on first before the resin. One, it will hopefully help seal the sides of the routed out area. To stop what they call bleeding. What that is, is when your resin goes into there and there. Because we've disturbed the side walls of the wood. It can soak into those sections and you won't get such a nice crispy line. Now there is wood sealers out there, I've personally never used them, but you can basically just brush a wood sealer on, it soaks in, dries, and that will seal all that exactly the same. What I normally do is just spray on crystal clear, it says it seals there hopefully, so we'll give it a good spray in once the boiling seal is dry, and that will be the end of the project wise, apart from the resin. If you put your resin in first, then spray your crystal clear over the top, it will send the resin dull. We want a nice shiny resin in this. Okay, so boiled linseed oil. We'll pop that on now. Just in case, again, a brush. Brushing it in. Doesn't have to be too fantastic. Just spread it about like that. You see how that's darkening down already. You can get into everything. It doesn't matter. Literally just throw it on. You'll see it better on the side walls. Just get some in there for you. You can see how that's darkened down there. It looks straight away. And that's it. So I'll give this a good coating. Spray on our crystal clear, and then when it's a resin time. Mm. 
Right, you can see from that, we've sprayed on. We've got a little bit of a shine there, so hopefully two or three layers of that crystal clear is enough to seal the barriers on the side there. Like I say, if not, get wood sealer and just brush it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. We've had our little inseed oil on, so it's just darkened down just enough so it stands out a little bit better. Okay, resin time. I like to use Amazing Clearcast. I use this on all my projects. I have no problem with this whatsoever. It's fantastic stuff. Comes in two parts. That's A uh, resin and B uh, Adna. You just literally mix the two together of the same volume. What I like to use are these little plastic party cups. One because they have little markers down the side. Now if you just mark off, I want to go for an inch at a time. You could do half as much as that. Good thing about Amazing Claycast, you can mix small amounts. So I'll say four little markers here. So we'll call that an inch of A with an inch of B. Just literally mix the two together. I pour B into A because B flows better than A. A is a bit more slower pouring. Once you've mixed the two together, follow the instructions on the package. Then we're going to drop in some colours. These are simple eBay specials. These are inks, dyes, powders. You can get all sorts. You can even pop in acrylic paint. Not something I've tried personally. So we've got quite a few little random colours. These might alter as the project goes on. I like the nice orange for the moon itself. She might end up with blonde hair. A bit of pink in the skin there. Very light uh, tone. And I believe we have a red ear. She might end up with a red dress. Or it could be green or whatever. We'll see as we go along. And I want some nice yellows and lighter colours going in to the wings itself. Okay, I'll mix this all up off camera. We'll drop a bit of colour in and basically just start filling this in. Once you've filled in your resin, get a nice cocktail stick. This is an oversized one, just to help it along its way and push it into those little corners. Then once it's all nicely in, you can do a couple of colours, go away, come back another day. There's no rush, no panic. Then we need a lighter, once the resin's in, and we'll just skim over the top like so. And what that does is release all the little air bubbles inside the resin, brings them all to the surface, and they all just disperse and give you a nice, shiny, clear finish. Right, let's get this project finished, and we'll start filling it in with the resin. Right, we've done our little mix. Measuring-wise, it's just... Just look at the draw for me, really. But I want to take a chance. We're going to start with the biggest area first, which would be the moon. We're just going to do that a nice orange. I mix slightly too much, so we've transferred a bit into another cup. That will sit to one side. You have a good 30 minutes to work with this. Then once we've done the moon, we can pop in maybe a bit of yellow to do the air. So there's our orange. These colours go a long way. and You do only need a couple of drops. Don't be pouring half a bottle in. So one, two, three, four... We'll start off with four little drops here. We'll give it a nice mix round. And you'll soon see how that changes. Like so. That's a lovely orange to work with. And that's it. That's all there is to it, really. Now it's just a case of pouring it into our sections. Remember which ones we want to pour them into. Once they're all in, we use the lighter to go over the top. Once that's all nicely settled down, we lose those air bubbles. And then we simply move on to the next colour, and the next colour, and the next colour. So I won't show you all of that, because it is basically the same thing. So we've got a bit together as going. You can see from that. I like to use these plastic knife and forks and spoons, little party sets you get. They're really cheap. The same as the beakers, like I've just said. These are ideal because they do have a little plastic lip on the end and that allows you just to scoop up little areas like that for the smaller sections you've got to go into. Okay, let's start filling this in and hopefully we'll come back when this is all done.
Right, that's it. That's our final colours gone in. Done the white. The orange and blue, that was actually done yesterday. So that's all nicely solid. We've got no issues with that whatsoever. We've basically just done the white of the wings and the pink today. I was going to do the wings nice clear colour, but I wasn't too happy with the wood showing through. So we put a little bit of white in there. And I think it's worked out fine in the end. So our last bit to go over with the lighter. Just get rid of your little ear bubbles. You'll see them dispersing as you go along like so. And you can do this a couple of times as you're working through the project. And that's it, that's all we can do for now. So we'll put this to one side. We'll come back in 24 hours and hopefully this little project should be finished. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. You can see from that, everything's nicely set. It's one solid piece. The only issue I did have really was, there's a couple of little speckles, so watch out for that. If I can just find one in the light, somewhere along the line. Maybe if I'm being fussy. You can just see a little speckle of dust there. So some folk make a canopy to go over the top. I'm not overly concerned about that. And the only other thing I'm not too happy with is the colour of the skin tone. I would have gone for a lighter pink on that. And you could do that with this because we do have that little lip. You could mix up some lighter pink resin and literally cover that up over the top of the arms and legs and face. There again, I can live with it. They're just little fun projects. Nothing of too much importance. And there we have it. This little routed out fairy. Measuring in at 19 inches by 15 and inlaid with resin project is now finished. Thank you very much for watching.